lucky people and very merry festive wherever you're listening. Welcome to the official Doctor Who podcast Christmas special. Woo! I'm Juno Dawson. I'm Terrell Charles. And I'm Crystal D. Today, with the help of Doctor Who's lead writer, um, Russell T. Davis, we are going to be discussing The Church on Ruby Road, shooting out was very first episode of Doctor Who. No. Clearly, there is going to be spoilers. So if you haven't seen the episode yet, digest your sprouts, go and watch the episode, have a bit more trifle, and then come back and we will fill you with the tea. Do you see what I did? That was like there was there was pudding and then tea. Yeah. Yeah. I'll stop now. Um, <laughs> we've got our sealed orders from from Russell. Um, he is going to guide us through this with lots of different topics. I believe, Terrell, you've got the first one. So I do. Let's go. So let's go. My Christmas present for the day is number one, <laughs> of course, the 15th Doctor. <laughs> Shocking. I'm <laughs> <Are you shocked? laughs> Okay, what did we think of Shooty oh, Gatwa oh, as so 15? Our first full take. Our first full shooting. episode. This felt like it could have been the first episode of Doctor Who that has ever been. I agree. Um, And what energy, just what energy that first scene, and what a statement have the Doctor's first scene where he is twirling in a kilt to EDM (laughs) in the club. The elephant in in the room for me is the Doctor is just gorgeous. And I think (laughs) the Doctor's like really enjoying the fact that he's regenerated into someone who looks Amazing. Excuse me, Peter Davison. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I feel like for me, the Doctor's always been someone who's been quite nerdy, quite dorky. But now we have, uh, you know, a young, very attractive Doctor. And yeah, it's a lot to get used to. I sometimes need a couple of episodes to get that's the Doctor now. But yeah. maybe it's because we had a little bit of shooty in the giggle, but he just felt like the Doctor mm. yeah. right away. Until that night, a time traveller came to call. A traveller known as the Doctor. Shruti understands the Doctor. So much of the energy just feels like all of our previous Doctors. It has all of the, the same bells and whistles. He's doing parkour he's on the roof. Parkour, like, that's true. I think it, like he's obviously very, he's going to be very physical, I think. Mm. We've, we've had a sense of that already. He embodies it. What the hell are you doing? I'm just dead! Well, what did you do that for? Chris is the ladder and just pops up! He's jumped straight in. In a way, that I don't know if any Doctor has, maybe since Matt Smith. Mm-hmm. He is 100% the Doctor and he's grabbed it with yeah. both yeah. hands. And I, I think it's such a statement as well. And I think we've reached this point in the show where, you know, we've had these Doctors dark and brooding. Am I a good man? And, you know, I've lived too long. Oh, it's just, <laughs> it's gone on too long. And it now, you know, now it feels like we've got this Doctor who, it, you know, has got a new lease of life almost. A lightness and a strangeness. Lightness, yeah. yeah. And I think he gets that like, the Doctor is an alien. He's mm-hmm. quite weird. I said this in a previous episode that, that David's 14th Doctor, um, although was already kind of the 10th Doctor, clearly. Um, but David's also gone on to say that he's taken inspiration um, from the fact that the Doctor has now been 11, 12 and 13 mm-hmm. in between um, and fed those elements in but he's also added a little bit of his own swagger and I think Shooty did too A Doctor and Who gets changed A Doctor Who yeah, yeah. 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 switches his It's taken 60 years yeah. we have a Doctor with more than one time <laughs> It's time It's it's definitely time um, All that said I think we should plough forward with envelope number two which Crystal I believe Excellent That's your present That's my pr- present for the day didn't get anything mm. else Aww. Happy holidays Merry Christmas Let's see <gasps> goblins. Goblins. <laughs> goblins, goblins, goblins. But before we talk about the goblins, and um, we have a message from the head hunter himself. Ooh. It's Russell T. Russell. Davis. Good morning, Russell. Hello, 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 faithful podcasters. It is I, it is Russell T. Davis, bothering you yet again. So, um, official podcast, uh, goblins, goblins. The toy maker said my legions are coming. And the next thing you know, we get what is actually kind of a supernatural creature. There's a couple of lines in there smoothing the way. They have to call them time riders at one point, if you want a more science fictional point of view. But actually, they're goblins. They come from the land of goblin. They gobble. It's it's one of the most supernatural enemies the Doctor has ever faced. What do you think of that? Is that a healthy direction? Does it make your heart sci-fi bone shiver? What do you think? Excellent. Okay, the goblins. The goblins that gobble. The goblins that mm. gobble. They gobble on coincidences and bad luck, good luck and bad luck, etc. Um, 
I feel like I had mixed feelings on the goblins personally. Oh, okay. Oh, oh okay. Um, I like them. You know what? Doctor Who has has done this in the past where where they've taken supernatural beings um, like. I don't know, Santa Claus vampires, and vampires yeah, and yeah. werewolves and things that we understand as fantasy, as magical, mm-hmm. um, and kind of put them in the world of Doctor Who and said, it's science, they're aliens, so they just look like them, what we know as vampires or maybe inspired vampires or whatever. I don't know, it felt a little maybe too gimmicky for, for, for a primer into Doctor Who. I'm imagining like the first person mm-hmm. watching Doctor oh, Who. Oh, that's with true, this. if you've never seen Doctor Who before, yeah. yeah. I see, I don't mind. I think there's a reason we call it science fiction and fantasy, SFF, because the lines are quite blurred anyway, and I think Doctor Who has multiple times said, this is how we do vampires. And so I can believe that if we're dealing with celestial beings mm. like the mm. celestial toy maker, I'm, I'm willing to accept a goblin. Yeah, if it wasn't a Christmas special, mm. maybe I'd be more like, but it, it, this, it was just giving it was, Christmas. it was Christmas. Yeah. I, agree. I yeah. think you can get away with it for Christmas. And I also love the fact that they were goblin pirates. Yeah. But sort of just added a sort of extra layer to it. I also liked the idea that because they were pirates, the Doctor felt very much like all the other adventure heroes that we still was elements of like Jack Sparrow, there was Indiana Jones. It, it yeah. added to the whole big adventure feel, which I think this episode, regardless of being a Christmas episode and introducing new things like goblins, it was still trying to be like, the vibe of Doctor Who is that he's this like swashbuckling mm. adventurer. Yeah. The, yeah. the ship was beautiful, a gorgeous mm. piece of design and the set was beautiful I thought as well. Yeah. Um, it's uh, me up next. It's number three. If we have no more to say on the little Goblins, who I thought were really cute. Um, <laughs> it is uh, Ruby and the Sundays, oh. which is not the name of her band. Um, <laughs> it sounds like a band. It should, it should be Ruby and the Sundays. Yeah, <laughs> let, let's talk about Ruby. I, I, I do. I love New Companion Week. I love New Companion <laughs> Week <laughs> almost, <laughs> as, almost as much as I love New Doctor Week. And that is because for me, I love Doctor Who best when he's this unknowable alien being. And then we get to see the Doctor through the companion's eyes. Mm. That we we are Ian and Barbara. If we go mm-hmm. right back to yeah, the first episode, yeah. we we are not Susan and we're not the Doctor. We're mm-hmm. Ian and Barbara. And then, however many years later, when Russell brought it back, he understood that mm-hmm. if you've never watched Doctor Who for the first time, you need Roz. Mm-hmm. You know, we have to under- we have to witness this strange entity through the eyes of a human. And so Ruby's really important. Um, there's something about her face. That is just instantly winning. <laughs> and maybe it's yeah. the big the big doe eyes or something. Yeah. Also the northern accent. It could just mm. be the accent as well. I, I warmed to her very, very quickly. Yeah. yeah. Hello again, podcasters. I'd like to kind of talk to Crystal about this. Um, uh, I've known Crystal for years and we all know her as a former presenter of Doctor Who, the fan show, but um, if you don't mind me putting words in your place, uh, Christelle, uh, Christelle was brought up in the foster care system and has done amazing and brilliant and beautiful work with care leavers online and in life. She's uh, really, truly a, a force in the land. And I salute you for that, Crystal. I think you do amazing work. And um, so now we've got Ruby Sunday, who has put into foster care and then adopted. And, and it's hard to get an authentic lived experience of fostering and adoption within a story that's got to have goblins and chases and tardises um so i hope i've done all right i just wondered what are your thoughts on that what are your reactions to that oh that's so sweet. cute oh oh what a nice little christmas present <laughs> um so i actually really loved this episode um i had amazing foster parents who fostered for uh, over 30 years um had many many children um but i like Ruby, stayed. Um, And uh, I thought it was really lovely seeing her relationship with her foster mum as an adult and, um, you know, who is still fostering and now, you know, um, Ruby is kind of supporting her in that. Hi, Mum. I got most of it, except I dropped the eggs, which is a really big problem because the shop's closed for all of one day. Guess what? We're having a baby! No way, you're kidding! I guess it's lovely to see people who've gone through the care system They've, you know, obviously turned out, Ruby's turned out, you know, well, and she's got that love from her foster mum as well. And I love the bit where the doctor looks at the fridge and says, you know, you've got such a big family because that's what it is, really. It's not, it's not, you know, your blood relatives. It's um, the people who have actually cared for you. Who are they? Oh, 
That's the family. It's Mum's children. Ah. It's all the kids that she's fostered over the years. You've got the biggest family in the world. <laughs> <laughs> I have. The pictures on the fridge, because we've got a photo box uh, at home full of pictures of all the kids oh. um, who my foster parents have fostered over the years. And... Um, and I think just getting some of the language in there, like, you know, Section 20 and getting the social worker in there as well. And, you know, coming with a bag of stuff. They take in a baby literally on, like on Christmas Eve. And I think it can often be like that, you know, um, sort of emergency foster care where, you know, a child needs a placement and they often have to take kids in at short notice. And that's kind of what happened to me. It was lovely to see that. and Especially at Christmas. When it's especially yeah. at Christmas. It's not necessarily about the family you're born into. It's yeah. the family you make. Carla and um, Cherry. Did we yes. enjoy Carla and Cherry? I they loved were Carla and Cherry. So, oh, uh, they just, they just, they just warm your cockles. Yeah, and my, <laughs> I mean, someone who was raised by a uh, Caribbean mum and nan mm. as well. They reminded me so much yeah. of my mum and nan, almost like to the tea, especially Cherry. I love Cherry. She's you were chuckling you, away. Oh, she I also heard loved you. a cup of tea. She does love a cup of tea. tea. Although the yeah. way Cherry was asking for a cup of tea, my nan is basically the same, but she asked for a brandy or a gin and tonic, tea. but the, in the same spirit, I suppose. Yeah. Um, and Hallelujah, praise the Lord. I thought this day would never come. A tea reach at last. And don't forget, two yellow pills at five o'clock. But you're the least of my problems. Like you said, Do Doctor Who is all about family, especially on Christmas Day. Um, so that, that warmed my heart. So I think it's really important that the companion does have a family. They never used to in the olden days, mm. or they were forgotten about very quickly. R.I.P. Aunt Vanessa. And... Um, it's because he makes the companion a fully rounded human. It's mm. it's just not believable that there is a young woman standing on a street in London waiting to be swept off into a TARDIS. Mm. You know, of course, Ruby has a life back home. Mm -hmm. And that's really important because who does she have to go back to? What is she fighting for? Yeah. If she's trying to save the world, who is she trying to save the mm. world for? Mm -hmm. So I think it's important. But I do think that's interesting that we have a character in foster care, mm -hmm. a character with a Caribbean background, yeah. and a trans lead singer. Mm -hmm. Coincidence! Russell. Oh no, the goblins are coming. <laughs> <laughs> Terrell, have you mm. got topic number four? I do have topic number four. Let's see what's inside. What could it be? Do, 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 do. Is it Davina? <laughs> oh, okay. I'm just waiting for Davina. It is... Ah! The new Sonic and Intelligent Gloves. Ah, oh, okay. okay. Oh, yeah. I didn't realise it was a Sonic to begin with. Neither did I. Because it's, it's very different. Mm. Mm. Wrong world. Why? What is that thing? Sonic screwdriver. A screwdriver needs screws. I, I thought the 14th Doctor had an amazing Sonic, and I'm not sure why they changed it. Don't change what... Don't try and fix what's broken. That's what they say. Mm, I, I agree. I, I, don't I, fix don't what's fix, not don't broken. Fix what's, I agree. <laughs> uh, I think the the Sonic from the 60th anniversary was one it of my favourite elements. It was so cool. It was epic. It was so out there and bizarre and yeah. huge. Oh, the screen, yeah. The and screen. I missed the screen. What happened to the screen? Yeah. I, I don't, we, well, maybe we'll get elements of that throughout the, the new season. It's got a Sonic um, disc. Yeah. It's, a Sonic. <laughs> it's the mini disc of the <laughs> Sonic screen. It's like you sort of fling it like, yeah. a, like a ninja star or something. You see, what the thing it? is, I don't care about gadgets. <laughs> so actually, I was like, no, oh, it's a bit flat now. That, that's as much thought as I yeah. gave it. See, I, I love the Doctor Who gadgets, all the little so random, random so triggers, because they're so yeah. random. And I, I did really like the gloves. I love all the Doctor Who gadgets. I like that they, they can overcomplicate something so much that they just seem ridiculous, like the glove that can rearrange the Mavity, um, yeah. which was, that, I thought that was funny. The new Sonic, yeah, I think I just really liked the 60th one. And I think, I, mm. I presume some fans might be a little disappointed that we won't see it again, but maybe this little remote control one will. It doesn't really look like a screwdriver. But the gloves, I think, were quite cool because obviously in the episode, they are pretty much just plain black gloves and obviously they light up but like any kid in a playground could just put gloves on and just pretend yeah. that they're I think there will be right now at homes across the world there will be kids smooshing up a bit of tin foil to create <laughs> their own um, <laughs> not to make a ninja star <laughs> to make a little shooty sonic screwdriver oh, yeah. also just a question that came to my mind I could be wrong in the past has the screwdriver 
I feel like it's worked on rope before. I feel like the doctor's unroped. I don't remember. And my mind goes to the adipose episode where the reporter was roped up and the doctor went, oh, yeah, and then yeah, yeah. unroped her. So I thought, Unless, yeah, yeah, you're, maybe that right, wasn't yeah. the same. Maybe that was wire. I don't Doubling know. Rope. Did you also like that they, they've just kept Mavity as a thing now? Mavity. <laughs> well, it's, that's yeah, it. It's lasted. It's not gravity anymore. I love that, obviously, Doctor Who has always existed, existed in the universe, in the world of Doctor Who, but I love that it's like, it's, it is our world, but it's also like getting bits now that feel very unique to the universe. Like the fact that like Davina McCall exists in the universe. And next time, it might be. <sighs> Ta-da! <gasps> you saved my life. Merry Christmas, Davina McCall. Imagine if you didn't know. Imagine if you lived in a world where you didn't know who Davina McCall was. That how awful. I know. But now she's she's on Disney Plus. Finally, Davina is on Disney Plus. That's what we've always wanted, really. That's all I I that my whole career's been leading this. <laughs> so Davina McCall was the host of Big Brother in the UK and she hosts mm. a show on a rival channel called Long Lost Family, where she reunites people with their long lost relatives, mm. which is why Ruby is on her show trying to find her birth mother mm. um so you were a foundling and you were fostered by carla who then went on to adopt you is that right yeah and she, she's amazing i mean she's not but <laughs> she's the best mum i could ever have yeah but i love i just love that russell t davis loves a hun he, he loves decorating his world of doctor who with the the stars of daytime television yeah. <laughs> you know, and then that feels like in the dna of russell's yeah. doctor mm. who less less so in the Stephen Moffat or Chris Chibnall years. It feels, it, it is notably Russell T. Davis yeah. to have Davina McCall in the Christmas special being attacked by goblins. That's excellent. Um, let's move on because I clearly would just talk about this all day, but let's, <laughs> let's move on to topic number five. Oh, it's still, me. you've got the envelope. Very exciting. Oh, it's a long one. What if this was the first episode of Doctor Who you ever saw? Mm. Ah, we well, talked yeah, a bit about this with yeah. the goblins. Yeah, so... There are episodes that I feel like were built for the odd fan that's just kind of popping in. Mm -hmm. uh, my mind immediately goes to like the 11th hour. I yeah. think it was very much that. It yeah. was, you don't need to know much about Doctor Who and this is just your your, your first um, jump in. Russell maybe has saved some other elements that are built for, for new fans for the actual, for when the new se mm -hmm. uh, se series starts. Um, because I think a lot of it was focused on just being Christmassy and just being like a nice mm. little Christmassy thing that you don't even, you don't even need to know what this show's about and just just enjoy it as a weird Christmas BBC yeah. thing. People are full. Yeah. People are sleepy. <laughs> I watched Rose on the plane back from New York, mm. and what's really interesting about that episode is so little information is mm. given. There's some vague notion that he might be a time traveller. Mm -hmm. There's a TARDIS, there's a girl, there's an attack from shop dummies. But actually a lot of the exposition about who I am and what I do actually was in the next episode, in The End of the World. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I wonder actually if Ruby's first trip in the TARDIS is going to be an opportunity for the Doctor mm. to say... I'm an alien. He didn't say he was an alien. I'm an, I'm an alien, you know, and so I think we'll get more come come the spring. I imagine throughout the series we're going to get that. We're going to get it slowly learn about mm. bits and pieces of Doctor Who, which is, I think, is is Doctor Who's whole thing. Whenever there's a new companion, we kind of, we relearn. If you already watched the show, we relearn things. If you're new to the show, you're learning for the first time, which is fun. Yeah. I think it ticks a lot of boxes. I think that, I think they could have showed a bit more of the TARDIS. I agree. Because... Obviously, in the specials, we had that amazing shot mm -hmm. of David Tennant running around the TARDIS. Yeah. And I think if this was your first episode, and maybe oh, yeah, maybe they mean. are holding it back. Yeah. Maybe they are yeah. holding it back for a future episode. But if this was your first episode, you would just be excited for next week to see more. Um, let's move on to topic number six, which is me. Ooh, let's go. Da, da, da. <laughs> okay, we have a we have a little play on words. Okay, a flood of speculation, and I suspect this might refer to Mrs. Flood, who even on mm. Christmas Eve sits outside. <laughs> 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 Just, but some people do. Some people love a little deck I chair. Love, I love how because I guess like older people sitting on a chair is such a vibe. Mm -hmm. Because like, I feel like that's what my foster mum does. My foster mum is like eighty two. Mm -hmm. And she can often be found sitting in a very similar looking chair doing word search yeah. mm. outside. The nursing neighbour vibe. Out, out, in the, out, out the front garden, back garden, just right. sitting, just, just sitting, 
Not, uh, in, not in Christmas. December. Probably not in December. Probably not in December. So, right, so this is where I want to, again, uh, address the international people. Um, what <laughs> um, England it's is cold. not the place to do that to <laughs> on Christmas Day because my nan often sits down and just does like, well, she has to play Scrabble. Um, yeah, but inside yeah, the warmth yeah. of her living room, yeah, <laughs> usually, exactly. and yeah, not outside yeah. on a sunny this Christmas Day. I think it's because she's obviously... Uh, she's obviously a bit gossipy. She's obviously yeah. like that that she's street. That she's the gossiper on that street and yeah. she really wants to know what's going on with this blue box. My mum is a curtain twitcher, particularly regarding people parking outside her oh, hub. Yeah, Does man, my mum have a car? No. <laughs> Does she it's... want people to park outside her house? No, she doesn't. It is a single-minded it's... obsession. But then we do yeah. have this, this little coda where we break the fourth wall. Mrs Flood looks to camera and is like... I'm Angie from EastEnders. Haven't you ever seen a TARDIS before? <laughs> Never seen a TARDIS before. Was I tripping? She did look to camera and say... She did, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. And Russell, if you're there, please give us a sign. Mm. Just as you think it's all over, I hope you kept watching past the credits because there we get a strange reveal from Mrs Flood next door. Who is she? How? Why? What? Where? It's Anita Dobson, folks. It could be anything... Do you think that's heading anywhere? Was that just a Christmas boozy punchline? Where is it going? My first thought was it felt very similar to when the toy maker vanished and a mysterious uh, hand with oh, some... Oh, the ring some, hand. Picked up a yes. ring and vanished. It <gasps> felt totally similar to that. She could be somebody. Mm. So, I mean, the thing she is, so we, we, have, we have a myriad of mysteries. We've got... Ruby's birth mum wearing mm. her hood and walking away. We've got strange next door neighbour. I guess the doctor also didn't know who Mrs. Flood was, which I think is mm. also he interesting. Didn't recognise her, no. No. Um, could it be Missy? It reminds all me of, the of Missy. All the comments impervious to the cold. Do you know what? Mm. All the comments are just going to be it's Serrani because I feel like every time <laughs> you get like a sort of, yeah, like a, a older female villainous person, it's Serrani, it's Serrani. Anyway, so what do we think is coming up next season? What are our predictions? <laughs> well, my thought was, um, and I'm sure they'll find some very clever writing reason mm -hmm. to not do this, but presumably Ruby ran in because uh, she's realised that the Doctor is a time traveller. Uh -huh. I can go back in time, yeah. I, I saved you, etc. Um, if I were Ruby, I would say, hey, can you go back to December 24th uh, a couple of decades ago and work out who that woman was yeah, that dropped me yeah. off? Um, I imagine that'll be her first question. I don't know if the Doctor's going to the doctor loves a, loves a lie maybe. and that, that's a, tr yeah, that's a, a tricky chap. one as well because obviously mm. we we touched on that with Rose, Tyler and her dad mm -hmm. we know Ruby can't cross into her own timeline there's rules about that but at the same time the doctor mm. loves a mystery mm -hmm. and it feels like click to my mind clearly that's why Ruby ran for the TARDIS because yeah. she she's seen an opportunity to and we know she's looking for a mum she went on mm. telly to find her so. mm -hmm. um, who knows I mean I'm sure at some point we'll get you know, we know, we know, we, we, know aliens, little, we know little you know. bits. Yeah. We know we've got Jinx Monsoon from RuPaul's Drag Race at some point. Mm -hmm. got Jonathan Groff. We've got Jonathan Groff at some Glee point. And other things. Yeah, and with some nice Bridgerton Regency yeah. fashion yeah. as well. There's a few different fashion uh, moments, I guess. We're getting sixties. We've got a sixties moment. We're getting, 60s 60s moment. We're getting yeah. A, yeah. a Doctor Afra. I guess. I guess the interesting thing about this Doctor is going to be what the Doctor's main costume is, because I feel like in all the sort of like um, kind of like spoilery set pictures we've seen yeah. on Twitter. He's wearing something different mm -hmm. all the time. And, uh, you know, it's like, what's that sort of doctor silhouette going to be? Mm. When they do the sort of 70th anniversary posters, what costume are they going to pick for him? Because I feel like all the doctors have got their iconic mm. yeah. sort of silhouette. I imagine the leather jacket sticks around. I think, I think, the, the I think, really, yeah, yeah. I think Ru Ruby made a point to be like, he was yay high wearing a leather jacket. I feel like mm. that's going to be a, a go-to thing. That's his yeah. thing, yeah. But people in real life get dressed. I must admit, I've always wondered why <laughs> don't get changed. Like, presumably the laundry yeah. has to happen at some point. Yeah, Even I Time imagine. Lords have a laundry yes, day. Yeah. Exactly. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to subscribe to the official Doctor Who YouTube channel or wherever you get your podcasts. Make sure you follow Doctor Who on all the social media platforms. And don't forget, you can head to our website, doctorwho.tv, to subscribe to our newsletter for all the very latest from the Hooniverse. Um, enjoy the rest of your festive as we enter the betwixtmas um, and then have an amazing new year now go watch Doctor Who again you know you're going to watch it more than once yeah. let's be honest go Excellent. watch it again enjoy <laughs> um, so enjoy the rest of your time I've been Juno Dawson who are you? oh <laughs> I was waiting for you Good to go well, I was going to but then you oh, just yeah, that's my turn. Turn. <laughs> uh, I've been Crystal D. <laughs> I've been Sorrel Charles thank you and good evening <laughs> bye good Christmas bye, bye. bye.
Don't forget to click below to subscribe to the official Doctor Who YouTube channel.